As I said earlier, um, but many have joined us since then, my name's Aaron Addison. I'm the incoming executive director for the World Geospatial Industry Council, or WGIC. We are a global nonprofit trade organization, and our members are made up of geospatial earth observation companies around the world. We currently have 45 members, uh, and we're rapidly growing that membership as our members continue to see benefits and belonging to the trade organization and the different types of engagement and outputs from our, our trade organization. Which brings us to today's topic. Our today's topic is on oceans, uh, which is a very rapidly em emerging topic. As many of you may have heard terms such as the blue economy. And what we wanted to do here at Energeo in 2023 is to showcase some of the WGIC members, uh, not only their capabilities, but I think also their, their thoughts and their thinking as this industry continues to rapidly develop uh, and take advantage of emerging technologies uh, that allow us to see not only near surface of, the, of our oceans, uh, but also well underneath our oceans, including down to seafloor uh, with specific types of technology. So I am a big fan of self-introductions. Uh, this will be our panel for today, so we have uh, WGIC members, uh, Mike Lee from a company called Plan Blue. We have Robert Hodenbach from Fugro. We have David Neff from Wolpert. Jonathan Pritchard from IIC Technologies. And last but not least, we have joining us Andy Waddington from, uh, from Hexagon. So with that, I'm going to uh, be quiet. I am not the expert, but I'm going to hand it over to Mike Lee. And we'll each go, so our format today is going to be give a little introduction, maybe up to seven minutes by each of our speakers. But really, this is a panel discussion. So I want you, as you're seeing the slides, to be coming up with your questions about their capabilities, about their services, but also about what they think is happening in this space and why it's important. Um, I'm sure some of our speakers will share, and I'm not, I'm not stealing any thunder here, because it's not a big secret, but the world is covered three quarters by ocean, by water. And so it's an area that's been long neglected in geospatial because we just see a blue surface when we get there. We're not sure what to do, it, do with it. But in fact, the surface continues uh, below the sea level. And we know with changes in our environment that there are implications at that interface that are significant for our communities and their ability to adapt to climate. So with that, I'd invite Mike up here. Uh, I guess you can take the clicker and uh, sit or stand if, as you please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a tremendous honor to be here with some of the biggest players in this industry, um, which I think sort of speaks to how exciting it is what we're doing at Plan Blue. Uh, it's not terribly unusual what we're doing, except for where we're doing it. We're providing high resolution spectral seafloor data, uh, which I think. People here kind of understand what that means. I don't think I really need to go on about how exciting hyperspectral imagery is. We've seen the kind of things that we can see, for example, from space. But we have sort of cracked the code to be able to take this under the water to apply the same thing to the seafloor. Of course, when I explain this to my non-geospatial friends, they don't really get that. We use a lot of fancy words. And so what I say is, you know how in science fiction movies, when they're looking down on some planet and the captain's always like, enhance, enhance, enhance. <laughs> we provide the enhance. Here's a short video that sort of shows what we do. This is usually what we're seeing when we're looking down at the ocean using uh, traditional geospatial means. But we provide the ability to actually zoom down and get that beautiful seafloor photogrammetry. But more importantly, with the hyperspectral and RGB cameras married to a navigational system, we're able to provide insights into the seafloor and make it so that computers can see what is happening on the seafloor, which is great because not only are computers able to scale and do things much faster, but we can use sensors that are much more sensitive than the human eye. And instead of seeing things in three wavelengths, we can see things in hundreds of wavelengths. That's that sort of bathymetric spectroscopy, which is so exciting. Uh, what kind of thing does this enable? Well. All kinds of things, infrastructure, uh, you know, seawalls, pipelines. But for us, we kind of started with seagrass, which 
Seagrass is sort of a humble thing, but seagrass is actually incredibly important because it's one of the best carbon sinks that we have. Seagrass is actually up to 30 times more efficient at fixing carbon than terrestrial based sources. And when we're looking at an economy that is increasingly seeing this kind of delay and inevitable catch up on carbon sinking, as well as drivers from corporate leaders like Apple, we see increasing demand for carbon sinks and carbon credits at the same time that terrestrial carbon sinks are coming under increased scrutiny because it turns out there aren't really that many good places to plant trees where there's not already a lot of carbon sunk. Traditionally, seeing what is going on on the ocean floor requires going down with divers, extremely expensive, slow, specially trained scientific divers who are doing things like manual coring or putting quadrants down and counting individual blades of seagrass 